Hey, this is Captain Morris from the City of Newberry Fire Department. Uh, today we're going to be looking at water mapping and the effects of water mapping. We've heard a lot about this, but in a residential structure, I haven't been able to find a lot of points of reference for us to actually see how it reacts. So we have a couple different ceiling types we're going to be using, and we're also going to be doing some water mapping off the walls. Some of the things we're going to remember, we're going to use a, a smooth bore nozzle. We're also going to use a fog nozzle using two different fog patterns. Uh, we'll use a straight stream and then we'll use a fog, about a 30% fog. Things we have to consider when we use a fog pattern, um, and even if we have a smooth bore and we're, we're making that O shape with a smooth bore, is we're actually getting entrainment. Could be up to 7,000 cubic feet a minute of entrainment. Uh, so that can dramatically affect fire conditions. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, flow some water and uh, we'll come back and see what it does. Our nozzle pressure is 50 psi. Uh, the fog nozzle is rated for 200 GPMs, but in all actuality, that's at 75 PSI, so we're getting less than that. Our ceiling was the tile ceiling with the wood uh, 1x4s underneath, uh, with plaster walls through most of the structure, and also a concrete wall through the center of the structure. We did flow on one of the concrete walls just to perform a little water mapping on that. Uh, as you can see here, um, it's not without effect. With our straight stream, we never saw the stream punch through the ceiling at all. We did expect that the water mapping would be dramatically changed by the light fixtures on the ceiling. So in just a second, you'll see another angle from this same uh, fog stream right here. And you can see when it's hitting that fixture, and then when it goes past that fixture, you can see the water dispersion. Um, so it, it makes a pretty dramatic impact. In this shot, you're able to see the water mapping across the ceiling to see that there is an extent of reach that we are not able to achieve as the rest of the ceiling is dry in the rest of the room. With a 30 degree fog pattern, we really weren't able to see any water mapping at all. We were able to see a little bit of entrainment at this degree of fog pattern, but we'll focus on that a little bit more later uh, we have some other video that shows and demonstrates that much better the smooth bore provided the best water mapping out of the experiments that we tried uh, it got the most reach uh, you'll be able to see our dry line actually moves back we had performed the the fog nozzle first and, and the smooth bore pushed that line further back um, also we didn't see much entrainment uh, you you can get a decent amount of air entrainment with a smooth bore if you move that, but once again, we'll be able to demonstrate that a little better. We can see water dispersion through the entire room with the smooth bore. We were also able to see there is some air movement, but not nearly as much as the straight stream or the fog. We can also see that looking at the ceiling, our dry spot has moved dramatically forward, uh, covering at least half of the room more than we had with our straight stream. The second set of tests that we performed was on a ceiling that uh, had some degradation. We wanted to simulate fire conditions in a room uh, that the ceiling had already started to fail to see how water mapping affected that specifically. And although there are still some uh, wooden boards above us that the water can map off a little bit, we saw some success with the water mapping even with this level of destruction to the ceiling. Obviously not as effective, but both the fog nozzle and the smooth bore were both very effective uh, when we flowed into that space. And we're also able to see that there is a light fixture right in the center of this room, which does directly impact our dispersion as well as the ceiling tile that's hanging low. But we were able to see a decent amount of success with that. The next test that we performed was on air entrainment and we focused on the fog nozzle to start with. We set it at a 30 degree fog and then we expanded from there. Uh, we knew that the fog nozzle was gonna produce a large amount of entrainment. Uh, we can have up to 7,000 cubic feet a minute, uh, but we wanted to go ahead and, and sh demonstrate these and then ne demonstrate the, the smooth bore as well. So this is another shot of the fog nozzle and as RJ starts to expand that pattern, 
there's a 30 degree fog and then he, uh, he kicks it up a little bit more, we can see that it, it really entrains a massive amount of air and that can totally change our, our flow path in that structure. So as we look at the smooth bore, started out just by flowing a solid stream at the ceiling and then we transition to a circular pattern, uh, much like we would perform in a structure. So one of the things we were looking for here is what level of entrainment we had. Uh, we know that the smooth bore doesn't have as much of an impact as the fog nozzle does, but as you can see, there is a certain level of entrainment that we have to consider when we're performing firefighting operations and when we're instructing others in fire dynamics. So we were able to see the different uh, nozzles and the way that the water mapped a little bit differently with our smooth bore and our fog. We also showed that 30 degree fog and even a little beyond that, we were able to see entrainment. Uh, the techniques work pretty well. Uh, it is a little bit different when we perform these in a real world environment. And remember that this was not sheetrock either. Uh, we anticipate that with sheetrock, it would also puncture through and you'd have a lot less time to perform actual mapping across the ceiling before it would puncture through into the ceiling. Thanks.